His arm was around my shoulders. He stayed there, comforting me until I gave in to exhaustion and slept. The next morning he wasn't beside me. I freaked out for a second because I had forgotten where I was, but I soon remembered and blushed. A knock came from the doorway. Want some breakfast? French toast, he said cheerily. I had to smile. He was wearing a light blue apron and an oven mitt that matched. I'm taking that as a yes. Deep breath. Really awkward deep breath. Mom. Get dressed. I brought your clothes back. He gestured to my old clothes in a folded pile at the foot of the bed. He left me to change and I got out of bed, closing the door softly. I changed and ventured into the bathroom. I looked like crap. My hair was messy from tossing and turning. My eyes were red and puffy from crying. I splashed some water on my face and ran my fingers through my hair. I still looked like crap. The hand-shaped bruise on my face was still a dark purple. Other bruises and old scars covered my wrists. I ached all over and I felt warm. Could I be catching something? Your toast is getting cold, he called from the kitchen. Kitchen, Coming, I ran to the living room, which was open to the kitchen but separated by an island. A plate sat on the island with four triangles of French toast and a bottle of syrup beside it. You never told me your name, you know. Oh, it's Sasha. Sasha Warren. A pretty name. Mine's Chris. Adler. He made a face. I don't like it. Never did. I like it. Chris. I smiled and sat and began to eat. So, what's the story with this? Do you have anywhere to go? Page turn. He leaned on the island, head in his hands. No, I haven't seen any of my friends in forever, and my folks are in a home. I was living with Stan at his place, and I guess this counts as breaking up. Well, we'll get you some clothes and stuff, and you can stay here until something turns up. He smiled. You done? Just about. I chewed the last bite and put down my fork. Good. We're going shopping. He put my plate in the sink and grabbed my hand, grinning. He pulled me to the door and down the stairs into the sunny morning. Dramatic pause. We came back with five bags of clothes and toiletries. We staggered into the house, laughing over a hilarious story one of us had told. We had went to the mall, then to a little family-owned bistro for lunch. We were really getting along. So then he comes running down the stairs, yelling at Mom. I can't find any of my shoes! Someone stole all the left ones, said Chris. He had been telling me about his brother Martin. Anyway, I had invited him over for dinner for today, before I had found you. So... You'll get to meet him soon. Actually, I think that's him now. A car pulled up through the window. I'll take these to my room, then, I said, not wanting to intrude on the reunion. No, no, sit down, I'll take them, he said, grabbing the bags and heading down the hall. I want to surprise him anyway. Should I get the door for him, then? No, he has a key, came the reply. I shrugged. I heard footsteps on the stairs and barking. Oh, no. A dog? I was morbidly afraid of dogs. The door opened, and before I could do anything, a big male pit bull bounded towards me, slavering wildly. I squealed and tried to shield my face as the dog jumped onto me, trying to lick my face through my arms. I'm sorry, sorry, get down, Rex. I'm so sorry, I don't know what to do with the bloody beast. Are you all right? I'm fine. I don't like dogs that much, I said, recovering. Marty, is your dog mauling my guest? came Chris's shout. I should bloody hope not. I thought I'd trained him better said Martin. Chris emerged from the hall, beaming, arms open to his brother. So who's this lovely creature? Martin smiled at me and dipped into a tiny bow. This is Sasha Warren. I saved her from the rain last night. So, Sasha, you're afraid of thunder and dogs? Yep. I stood up to avoid the pit bull that had been panting longingly at me. It growled playfully and I backed away nervously. Chris put his arm around my shoulders. It's all right. Rex barks big, but he's a sweetie, said Martin. So what's for dinner? I think Sasha should pick. Any restaurant you want. You name it. Really? Really, my treat, Chris said. Oh, wow. Um, how about seafood? All right, I love seafood. To the bay! Chris threw his fist in the air like a super, like a superhero movie. I laughed. Dramatic pause. At the restaurant, we had a table by the page turn. Giant window looking out onto the bay. It was beautiful. We ate and talked until almost closing time. The waiter had to finally tell us it was time to go. We drove home talking and laughing about dinner. It seemed that Martin was staying the night. Since there was only one spare bedroom, he and Rex would have the couch. This was decided without me, or I would have objected, but they were both very stubborn. Well, I think I'm going to bed then. It's been a long but good day, I yawned. Good night, Sasha, they both said. 
In truth, I was just leaving them alone. I changed into pajamas and sat on the bed until I heard voices. Well, Sasha's quite the find, Martin said. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of worried, though. I feel like I can't leave her alone or something will happen to her. I don't want her boyfriend to catch up with her, came Chris's reply. Oh? What happened? You've seen that bruise, do you have to ask? I want to keep her safe. Then tell her you love her. It's obvious you do. My heart stopped for a second. I waited silently for the answer. After a pregnant pause, I heard, I can't do that. It's, it's way too soon. I just met her last night, I sighed. That's your choice, but what if she loves you too? You'll regret it if you never find out. I know, okay? I'll, I'll tell her when I'm ready. Right now, a sigh. I'm going to bed. Good night, Marty. I heard footsteps and quickly pretended to be asleep. The footsteps stop outside my door. I heard another sigh and the footsteps moved on. I felt kind of sad. I slept without dreams that night. Dramatic pause. I woke up early the next morning. The sky outside was foggy and gray still. I decided to take a walk. I dressed silently and snuck out past Martin and Rex. I went down the stairs and stretched in the small yard. So this is where you've been hiding from me, said a very familiar voice. Stan! I told you I was leaving. I assumed you knew that meant for good. I began to back up the stairs. I've come to take you home. You're obviously very confused. Let me take care of you, he advanced. No, you're confused. I don't need you anymore, Stan. I'm not coming with you. And what makes you think that, Sasha? He said my name slowly, sweetly. It made me sick. Because she has someone who cares. I looked behind me to see Chris and Martin standing at the top of the stairs like angels from heaven. They stormed down the steps to stand in front of me defensively. You need to back off, Stan, Martin said, crossing his arms, before we escort you off the property, Chris added. I'm not leaving without my Sasha, he growled and lunged, taking something from his pocket. Page turn. No, I shrieked. That's <laughs> fail. A wet thud and a grunt of pain. Then both me and Martin were screaming. Chris fell to the ground. Blood pooled. I dropped to my knees and held him, screaming at him not to leave me. A bark sounded the approach of Rex. All I can say is thank God for that dog. He jumped onto Stan, attacking his face and knocking the knife from his hand. Martin whipped out his phone and dialed 911. Minutes later, sirens approach, approached as Martin hauled Rex off of Stan. Itchy nerves. Three police cars and two ambulances screeched around the corner. Stan was taken, moaning away. Chris was loaded onto a stretcher while Martin and I were taken aside for questioning. Dramatic pause. It was a month later. Stan was in jail, and me and Martin were driving Chris home from the hospital, fully recovered but still in rehab. He had confessed his love to me on what he thought was his deathbed, refusing to accept our repeated insisting that he would pull through. Even Rex got through the ordeal unscathed. There was, of course, a hearing to decide whether or not he was a dangerous animal, but it ruled that the attack was provoked and he was defending his masters. We arrived home, and Martin and I helped Chris up the steps. I stopped and kissed him on the cheek while Martin unlocked the door. He grinned. After Martin... I mean... After Martin. After dinner, we had a welcome-back chocolate cake that Martin had supposedly baked himself, but I had seen the bakery box in the trash. We had ate and laughed, and in the middle of my piece, I found a chocolate-covered diamond ring. Six months later, I became Chris's wife. Hooray. The end. <laughs>